Just recently, we decided to upgrade the navigation fit on the boat and replace the old but trusted Garmin 450 with the brand new Echomap UHD 92 SV. However, although the boat had a transducer fitted and it was a Garmin transducer, I had to do a little bit of fettling to make it work with the plotter itself. The new plotter has a 15 pin input. You do get a cable that converts it down for an 8 pin input, but my old transducer was a 6 pin. We solved this problem and not only that, decided to see if the integration worked with the autopilot, so it was only wise to take it out to see and try. When I was installing the chart plotter, one of the problems that I came across was that I have a transducer already fitted in the boat and I know that it's a dual frequency transponder and it's perfectly good and it works really well with the chart plotter that I've installed, but the plug is the wrong plug. It's got a six wire plug on it. The new chart plotter comes with a 15 pin plug and an eight pin adapter. What this is, is a six pin transducer to an eight pin sound adapter wire block. So in the box, I've actually got a terminal block that's going to allow me to connect the devices together. And this is the latest version, so I can put more than one thing into this box. What's also very clever is that I've managed to keep the lead that I had left over from that old Garmin lead, if you remember, which has got the six pin plug out and the tails on it. So rather than cut the transducer cable, I can use this to attach to the transducer cable once I've wired it into this terminal block. The good news is it comes with some really good instructions. So it tells you exactly what the wiring needs to do to fit into this block. So my plan is to take this block here. Um, I have got these spare poles where I can actually put more than one device into this. However, I'm gonna wire this directly into here, connect this to my transducer, and then connect this end to the 15 to eight pin lead that I have coming from the chart plotter and then hopefully it should work so if we've got this right let's just pull this all the way in here let's give ourselves as much room there's not a lot of room because that cable hasn't got as much cable on as i thought it might have but let's very delicately push these into the terminal block one at a time and I'm following the pin out here. Red for one, black for two, bear for three, green for four, white, which is the temperature return for five. Um, there isn't a speed sensor on this one, speed, power and speed. So although I've got the leads here, I'm not entirely sure what the other two cables are, but I do know that Garmin do match up the colors in their feed cables to the transducers it'd be very daft not to but from experience i know that that is the case so let's get the black wire in i was going to tin that um, bare wire but i think i can just about work with what i've got there certainly for testing purposes i'll be able to do that i'm trying to just wind these up a little bit more so they are more together before they go in the terminal block um, tidy them up it's going to get easier as i get away from the um the main the first one which is the shorter one so it's a bit of shielding there because the temperature is uh, shielded of course before fitting them in these are fiddly i don't know if you have the same thing but when i'm working close up like this with anything um I find that uh, sometimes the 
my fingers go a little bit tingly just going to move that back a tiny little bit there so you can see properly exactly what i'm doing here um next one is to put the negative for the transducer in which is the y2 with the depth let's push that into the terminal block there do that up of course i did remember to put the hoop on the uh, watertight clamp in there first the three is the bare wire that is the now it might be that there is another bare wire here there's the bare wire that goes for the shielding um, for the temperature sensor and there's a shielding around the depth sensor so i'm hoping the right shielding has gone in the right place odd bits of string there let's just put the green in place next and then the temperature send which is the white um, hopefully i'll cut that at just the right length and not too short and that should slot straight in there so what i've done is kind of staggered the cables as i've cut them um, i've got nothing to play with here if this was wrong that there would be nothing to play with but that fits like a treat there and i've still got these remaining two wires i'm not entirely sure what they are as yet i could possibly push that in a bit further um, there which i will do in a second that's it that's the five main wires i need for the transducer to work just checking the terminal block is good these two wires are not bare but i'm going to leave them there because i need to test this now to find out if this works as it is but let's just do that cable up nice and tight and for testing purposes This end should now be able to connect directly to the transducer. Whilst this end should be able to go to our adapter and go into our chart plotter. So let's go and try that out. I've lost it. I've lost the end of the cable again. <laughs> My hand's stuck now. And uh, I should have done that. I picked it up. I've watched it disappear down the hole. I need the other end of this. Oh, Once again, poking around with the old slide rule, the parallel rule. <laughs> you have to have these devices on board. You have to have these nav uh this nav equipment on board because if you don't you can't use it to poke things around underneath the helm <sighs> why do i always drop things honestly this is like bodge city isn't it hey but you know we're boating on a budget we're trying to do absolutely the best we can with the money that we have available and so taking a boat back out of the water to fit a transducer at this point in time i've already got a depth gauge anyway um seemed like a bit of a, a senseless thing so this is the best stop gap yes it's an expensive box and yes i could have probably just wired the plug straight into the lead however let's see if it works hey initially this does load the base map for garmin as i said i have got the um navionics chart in here as well in the memory card so just touching on that you can see the navigation chart will bring up my navionics chart which is a lot better it's in dark mode at the moment i was playing around with the settings the other day and that was on my uh on my laptop so just give you an idea you can change between that just by flicking on i think here you can go to backlight on or off or up or down um, and just move your finger up and down there to get the right level you can also swap between day and night as well or auto and it will automatically bring up the level for you okay so that basically is 
how to backlight light and the color mode works. Um, let's it's gone into day mode now because I've popped it in automatic and it's just finding a, a position and it's finding the time of day there. Let's have a look and see what happens with the depth gauge. So sonar. The transducer is disconnected. Power down and check transducer connection to enable sonar. OK, let's uh, let's do that. And I shall just check all the connections because it may be that the wiring isn't quite right, in which case I will have to cut this cable and go again. But uh, my my gut feeling is it is the right colour. Um, and we'll have a look at that in a moment. Now I have to admit that uh, I made a small boo-boo. Do you remember I connected up when I was wiring this cable in the shielding wire to pin 3? Well I used the shielding off the temperature core. I didn't use the shielding off the main feed and I couldn't get it to connect. So what I've done is I dumped this cable completely and just did exactly what it says on the tin. This is the transducer, so it's a dual frequency transducer. It's a relatively old device, however it still works quite well and I know it's compatible. So I followed the exact same wiring diagram. I put the leads in exactly the same place. But if you do this yourself and you're in this position, use the shielding off the main feeds, not the shielding off the temperature feed and then that will go to the connection lead which is the 8 to 15 pin and then if you come back to your plotter the sonar, sonar should now work so let's have a look and see what happens it does and it gives me some interesting new functions which I've not seen before so I have a traditional sonar so it will give me my depth gauge I can change the screen on how that works. It gives me sonar information. I can go back. I can look at split frequency. So this is the high and low frequency together. And as you can see there, this is just looking behind me. Back. I can use a flasher. I don't know what the flasher is. That's quite interesting. And bear in mind that this is an older older device um, that's not building as good a picture as I would like it to um, I would like it to build a clear picture that's not a clear picture it's chirping on there so I think what I'm going to have to do is to change the range over and get this to work better there we go Look, um, I'm sitting in about two meters of water at the moment so that's more realistic of what I'm looking at this moment in time I'm I've got a lot of growth underneath the boat so looking from the water downwards I can see that's pretty much reflective of what I'm seeing at the moment don't know what the flasher does that's <laughs> this is all new to me so it's given me a depth of 0 0.6 meters underneath my minimum points that's not very high at all I can record the sonar as well and the data graphs are there. That's giving a water temperature of 13 degrees, which is quite warm. I've got to play with this. I'm going to play with this and find out what I can do to make this work better. But uh, the good news is it is a dual beam, it's working as a dual beam and it's recognising it as a dual beam. So I've got 77 kilohertz and 200 kilohertz. This is certainly the better, better picture and give me a fair picture of what's underneath there. So yeah, good news is it works. The thing is I'm sitting on a big pile of weeds at the moment and so realistically that's not going to be accurate. Now I, I did say about setting up your navigation. Now with this I installed the Navionics chart. All you have to do is put it in there and the navigation chart will actually come up and automatically install itself or be readable off the card. But when you pop it in here you have to take it back out again afterwards, put your Active Captain card in and then connect to your device that you have your Active Captain account on. Because that will then 
register your Navionics Plus to this device and to your account. It takes two to three hours and then what they'll do is they will activate your Navionics subscription and for one year your navigation will be updated. Now it doesn't update on this card as such. This card has the data as it was. What happens is you decide what you want to download on your device. You then square it out and you download it to your device. When you reconnect that device to this plotter, it will update that mapping package to the plotter. So there it is. I've installed my depth sounder using a device that Garmin produced. This is the terminal block that they produce. I'm pretty certain it's a straightforward wire through with just a resistor underneath between two of the wires. But this works, so I'm very happy that this works. <laughs> I draw 90 cent, 95 centimetres, just under a metre. And that's a depth from the skimmer. So underneath that, I've got another 70 centimetres. So that's given me less than 60 centimetres for my propellers. So halfway to Southwold on a beautiful day. The sea is actually really good. Um, I'm just at my cruising RPM, which for this boat is just under 2,000 RPM per engine. It gives me 17 knots through the water. And uh, the track is being sent to the uh, autopilot and it's correcting it and keeping it. It's trying to bring this back on, but it's kind of keeping it parallel. So it's doing what it should do. So I'm pretty much hands off today. Everybody said you can't make that talk to that. Well, I can, and it does. It's a secret how I made that happen. Look at this for a day. Autopilot doing a really good job holding us bang on track. But this is a lovely drive. Just a couple of miles to run to Lowestoft. Uh, it's a bit rolly, but we're early, so we're just rolling around in the sea. The mist is clearing, the sun is coming out, so this could be a really nice day at sea, actually. Um, yeah, well, I'm going in, which is Odd. But I had a really good day yesterday, so we've given the boat, we've put the boat through its paces again. Uh, Ambition-wise, we haven't quite gone as far as wanted to, and but what we have done is we've tested out the GPS, the how it's been installed, how it works with the other equipment. I've got a few tweaks and things, but essentially it does what it says on the tin. And uh, if anybody wants to know how we've done that, I'm happy to share that because that's just a little trick with the old Neiman 183 but uh, it works there we go 